Welcome, moon lovers! Tonight, September 7th, 2025, over 7 billion people across the planet have the chance to witness one of nature's most spectacular celestial shows, a total lunar eclipse that will transform our familiar moon into a glowing blood-red orb for an incredible 82 minutes. Well, tonight is the night we've been waiting for, the longest total lunar eclipse since 2022. Whether you're watching from Australia, Asia, Africa or Europe, you're in for an absolute treat. And if you're in the Americas, don't worry, I'll show you how to watch this amazing event online. But this isn't just about the eclipse. We're also going to explore five fascinating lunar features you can spot tonight, turning your moon gazing into a real adventure. So grab your binoculars if you have them, find a comfortable spot, and let's dive into tonight's cosmic spectacle. So what exactly is happening tonight? Well, for the next few hours, Earth is going to slide directly between the sun and the moon, casting our planet's shadow across the lunar surface. This isn't your everyday occurrence. It's a perfect cosmic alignment that's been building up to this moment. The eclipse officially began at 1528 GMT. That's 11.28 a.m. Eastern Time, when the moon first kissed the edge of Earth's penumbral shadow. But here's where it gets really exciting. Totality, that's when the moon is completely immersed in Earth's darkest shadow, starts at 17.30 GMT and lasts until 18.52 GMT. That's one hour and 22 minutes of pure blood moon magic. Now why does it turn red? Here's the beautiful science behind it. As sunlight passes through Earth's atmosphere, our air acts like a giant lens, bending the light and filtering out the blues and greens. What gets through? Those warm reds, oranges and coppers. The same colours that paint our sunrises and sunsets. Essentially, during totality, the moon is being illuminated by every sunrise and sunset on Earth simultaneously. How poetic is that? And here's a bonus for tonight. If you look carefully near the eclipsed moon, you'll spot a bright yellowish star. That's not a star at all. It's Saturn. The ringed planet is making a special appearance right next to our blood moon, reaching its closest approach at 1710 GMT. Let's talk about where you can catch the best views of tonight's eclipse. If you're watching from Asia or Western Australia, <laughs> congratulations, you've hit the jackpot. You'll be able to witness the entire eclipse from start to finish. For our viewers in Tokyo, totality runs from 2.30 to 3.52 a.m. local time. In Perth, Australia, you're looking at 1.30 to 2.52 a.m. local time. The entire eclipse wraps up there around 4.55 a.m. local time. Eastern Australia and New Zealand, you're also in prime position to see most of the eclipse phases. Africa and the Middle East will catch significant portions of the show as well. Now for our European friends, particularly those in the UK and Western Europe, you're in for a special treat. The moon will rise already in eclipse. Imagine this. As the sun sets in the west, a blood red moon rises in the east. It's going to be absolutely stunning for photography. Just make sure you have a clear eastern horizon. Unfortunately, our viewers in North and South America will miss this one. But don't despair, you can watch through numerous live streams online. And mark your calendars. March 2 through 3, 2026, will bring you a spectacular total lunar eclipse visible from your side of the world. One important tip, unlike a solar eclipse, you don't need any special equipment or protective eyewear. This is completely safe to watch with the naked eye, binoculars or a telescope. In fact, binoculars will really enhance your experience tonight. While we're waiting for totality or admiring the blood moon, let's explore some incredible lunar features you can spot tonight. First up, Tycho Crater the moon's most spectacular splash mark. Located in the southern highlands, Tycho is impossible to miss. It's that bright crater with those incredible rays spreading out like a cosmic starburst. At 85 kilometers in diameter, it might not be the moon's largest crater, 
but it's definitely one of the most dramatic. Here's what makes Tycho special. It's young, well young by lunar standards at just 110 million years old. When the asteroid that created Tycho smashed into the moon, it was travelling at tens of thousands of miles per hour. The impact was so violent that it excavated material from deep within the lunar crust and scattered it across nearly half the moon's surface. Those bright rays you see extending from Tycho, they stretch for over 1,500 kilometers. During tonight's eclipse, as the moon darkens, watch how these rays seem to glow against the darker background. It's like nature's own highlighting effect. But here's the really cool part. Tycho has a massive central peak that rises two kilometers above the crater floor. This mountain didn't exist before the impact. It formed in seconds as the crater floor rebounded from the shock, like a drop of water splashing back up. If you have a telescope, look for this central peak. It catches sunlight beautifully. Fun fact, Tycho is named after Tycho Brahe, the 16th century Danish astronomer who made incredibly precise observations of the planets, all without a telescope. How fitting that his namesake crater is one of the most observed features on the moon. Next, let's visit the most famous spot on the entire moon, Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. This is where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history on July 20, 1969, becoming the first humans to walk on another world. Mare Tranquillitatis is that large, dark plain slightly east of the moon's centre. It covers about 421,000 square kilometres. That's roughly the size of California. But despite its name, this sea has never held a drop of water. These dark plains are actually ancient lava flows that filled massive impact basins billions of years ago. The lava that created Mare Tranquillitatis is rich in iron and titanium, which gives it that distinctive dark color. When this mare formed between 3.3 and 3.8 billion years ago, the moon's interior was still hot enough for volcanic activity. Massive eruptions flooded the low-lying basins with basalt, the same type of rock that forms Hawaii's volcanic islands. During tonight's eclipse, watch how Mare Tranquillitatis seems to darken more than the surrounding highlands. This creates an almost 3D effect that really makes the moon's features pop. And here's something incredible to think about. Somewhere in that vast dark plain, in an area called Statue Tranquillitatis, sits the base of the Apollo 11 lunar module, along with the American flag, scientific instruments, and yes, Neil Armstrong's famous bootprints, preserved forever in the airless environment. When you look at Mare Tranquillitatis tonight, you're looking at one of humanity's greatest achievement sites. Now let's turn our attention to what many astronomers call the monarch of the moon, Copernicus Crater. If Tycho is the moon's splash mark, Copernicus is its crown jewel. Located slightly west of centre, Copernicus is a magnificent 93 kilometre wide crater that's visible even with the naked eye. But grab those binoculars and you'll see why it's so special. Copernicus has everything a spectacular crater should have. Terraced walls, a complex central peak system and a rough hummocky floor that tells a violent story. This crater formed about 800 million years ago during the time when the first complex life was evolving in Earth's oceans. The impact that created Copernicus released energy equivalent to millions of nuclear bombs, excavating a hole nearly four kilometers deep and throwing debris across thousands of kilometers of the lunar surface. What makes Copernicus truly remarkable are its terraced walls. As the initial crater formed, the walls were too steep to support themselves in the moon's gravity. They collapsed in a series of massive landslides, creating these step-like terraces that looked like a giant amphitheater. If you could stand on the crater floor, these walls would tower above you like mountain ranges. During tonight's eclipse, Copernicus will appear as a bright spot against the darker Oceanus Procellarum, the ocean of storms. Watch how it seems to glow, especially those rays extending from it. 
These rays are made of pulverized rock that was blasted out during impact. Material that's more reflective than the surrounding dark maria. For our fourth feature, let's explore Merichrysium, the Sea of Crises. Don't let the dramatic name fool you. This is actually one of the most serene and isolated maria on the moon's near side. Merichrysium is that distinct oval-shaped dark patch on the moon's eastern limb. It almost looks like a dark eye gazing back at Earth. What makes it unique is its isolation. While most marae connect to each other, Chrysium stands alone, completely surrounded by bright highland terrain. This sea is actually an ancient impact basin formed over 3.85 billion years ago during a period called the Late Heavy Bombardment when the inner solar system was being pummeled by asteroids and comets. The impact that created the Chrysium Basin was catastrophic. It excavated a depression nearly 740 kilometers across and several kilometers deep. Here's what's fascinating. Mare Chrysium is home to a mass concentration, or mascon, an area where the moon's gravity is slightly stronger due to the dense volcanic rock filling the basin. These mascons were discovered in the 1960s when NASA noticed they were pulling spacecraft slightly off course. During the eclipse, Mare Chrysium takes on an almost copper colour that's distinct from other Maria. Its isolated position makes it an excellent reference point for tracking the eclipse's progress. As Earth's shadow creeps across the moon, Chrysium is often one of the first major features to enter totality. For our final feature, we're going big, really big. Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rains, is the second singlest Mare on the moon and it's surrounded by some of the most spectacular mountain ranges you'll find anywhere in the solar system. Mare Imbrium dominates the moon's northwestern quadrant, covering an incredible 1.1 million square kilometers. The impact that created this basin was so powerful, it's considered one of the defining events in lunar history. Geologists actually use it to date other features as either pre-Imbrian or post-Imbrian. But what really steals the show are the Montes Apenninus, the lunar Apennine mountains that form Embrian's southeastern border. These mountains are absolutely massive, with peaks reaching five kilometers above the mare floor. That's over half the height of Mount Everest. Unlike Earth's mountains, which formed through tectonic activity over millions of years, the lunar Apennines were created in minutes. When the Embryum impactor struck, it instantaneously lifted and overturned enormous blocks of crust, creating this magnificent mountain chain. During tonight's eclipse, watch how the Apennines create a dramatic boundary between dark Mare Embryum and bright Mare Vaporum. Even during totality, you might be able to make out this mountain chain as a slightly brighter curve against the darker Maria. Here's something special to look for. Within Mary Embryum, see if you can spot some ghost craters. Ancient craters that were nearly buried by lava flows, but still show their rims poking through. It's like looking at lunar archaeology. What an incredible night we have ahead of us. Tonight's blood moon eclipse isn't just a beautiful light show. It's a chance to connect with the cosmos to see our moon transformed into something magical and to explore the incredible geology of our nearest celestial neighbor. Remember, totality runs from 1730 to 1852 GMT, but the entire eclipse experience lasts over five hours. Take your time, enjoy each phase, and use this opportunity to really study those five lunar features we discussed. Tycho with its brilliant rays, the historic Mare Tranquillitatis, uh, magnificent Copernicus, isolated Mare Chrysium, and vast Mare Imbrium with its towering mountains. If you're cloud out or on the wrong side of the planet, don't forget about those live streams. And mark your calendars, the next total lunar eclipse is March 3rd, 2026, followed by another on December 31st, 2028. Did you manage to see tonight's eclipse? Which lunar feature was your favourite? 
drop a comment below and let me know about your experience and if you captured any photos I'd love to see them. Tag me on social media. If you enjoyed this lunar adventure please hit that like button it really helps the channel. Subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next astronomical event. We've got the partial solar eclipse coming up on September 21st and then three consecutive supermoons to close out 2025. Until next time, keep looking up, stay curious and remember, we're all crew members on Spaceship Earth, sailing together through the cosmos. Clear skies everyone.